Okay, back again. Watermelon sushi, let's go. The watermelon sushi is by far the best thing I've ever tasted that resembles actual fish. And people have been asking about it. I've given it to my family and people who already eat meat and they love it. They fell in love with it and I'm in love with it now. So I'm gonna basically slice up some watermelon and bake it for two hours. We'll throw a little bit of lime juice, a little bit of soy sauce on there, but really lightly. We just want it to cook down for about two and a half hours. And sometimes this dish is even better when you let it sit overnight. So I'm gonna make two watermelons. Uh, I actually grabbed two watermelons with seeds. You can do seedless if you like. I just grabbed the, the baby watermelons with seeds. So we're gonna chop them up, throw them in the oven, and roast those babies. Let's go. Okay, so I went in through a hat on, so I don't have my hair on my face. We're gonna go ahead and slice the watermelon right now. Now, don't make fun of me. I, I personally don't like watermelon. That's what makes this dish so good to me. Um, so I have little experience cutting watermelon, maybe cantaloupe, but okay. So let's go ahead and go. That end off. So I'm going to do slices and then just cut around the rind and we'll make it work. So your sushi, your, your, your watermelon pieces should be, you know, about two inches. I'm just gonna just go this way. So now we have our rounds that I'm gonna clean up. Just get a little bit of the rind that's still left on there. So what'll happen is this'll cook for two hours and you're basically gonna be just cooking out all the sweetness and the sugar and all of the water and it's just gonna condense and it's gonna look beautiful. It's gonna look like sushi, baby. So I think these would be perfect sizes because once it's cooked, you can still slice it down more if you wanna cook it. Um, if, if you wanna cut it down a little bit more for bite size pizza. Okay, so we have our oven set on preheat for 350. We're tossing the watermelon in the grapeseed oil. We're not gonna season or do anything just yet. We just want it to be coated in the olive oil, in the grapeseed oil. You can use whatever oil's available for you. I'm just using a high heat oil just, just because I don't want any uh, residue flavor left over in the watermelon and what we'll do is we'll turn these about every 30 to 45 minutes just keep an eye on them and look at them and it'll tell you you know if it needs to be turned and the juice make sure you save the juice that's going to be drizzling down over there and you'll see it start to burn what'll happen is the sugar will burn out of the watermelon okay so be mindful that that's not burning of the watermelon. Now, sometimes you might get a little glaze of a burn over it, but we can always slice that off. But sometimes the flavor is good, depending on your liking. Okay, this watermelon's been cooking for about an hour now. And <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and toss it. This is the second time I'm tossing it. And what you'll start to see on the edges there is that's a lot of the sugar that's burnt, that's cooking off. Now you see how it's cooking down, it's turning translucent. It's almost, it almost looks like, like a red piece of salmon there. I know you meat eaters are like, you're crazy. But trust me, once we start putting our uh, seasonings and sesame oils and mixing everything together, it's gonna be amazing. So the next time I open it up, I'm gonna squeeze some lime juice, a little bit of soy sauce, and have that start kind of seeping into the watermelon since it's cooked down. And that juice, will we'll try to save some of it just depending on how brown it gets on the outside here. But we're gonna let this cook for another hour. 
but I've been checking on it every 30 minutes or so. Look at that. Yeah, that's where it's at. Okay, so we pulled it out. It's about two hours and 15 minutes. Everybody's oven is different, so you probably should just uh, just keep an eye on it. But this is how you want it to look. And you also want to taste the piece, too, and you bite into it, and you can see the consistency that's almost like fish. So, um, like I said, you're going to see all of the sugar and even some of the soy sauce that's burnt off. So I recommend maybe putting the, putting the soy sauce last because if it drips, it, it kind of caramelizes and you see, but that's fine. It's just, it adds a little flavor, but one thing for, I'll know for next time is just to wait on the soy sauce until it's done cooking. Okay. So we're going to go to the next steps, which we'll put it in our bowl and add the sesame oil and all the other ingredients. Okay, so now I began putting the watermelon inside the bowl with the, the green onion, the sliced jalapeno, and a little bit of sweet onion. Tonight. So we gonna go ahead and squeeze in some lime juice. We'll do about one tablespoon of sesame oil. Okay, let's move this. And then soy sauce. Okay, so we add everything in there. Now this is where the magic happens let it marinate in that juice. And I'm actually going to taste the juice to see if I need to add anything. Because like I said, I don't measure, I'm freestyling this, but I will post the measurements in the channel. Okay, here's our watermelon sushi, AKA ahi tuna. Look at this, the texture, it's meaty, but also has that bite, a little bit of crunch. Now it's a little bit sweet, but not too much. That's why the jalapeno, the sesame oil, lime juice, all of those things neutralize some of the original watermelon flavor. So there we have it. After letting this sit for at least four hours or let it sit overnight, it will really, really, really marinate in the sesame oil, okay? Watch the next video to watch me roll some sushi.